speaking as someone who was recently arrested by the guile of the NYPD and the force of Columbia University, I refuse to remain silent. Other people are coming. Your organizers are returning. I ask you, I ask you to please hold this line and to continue to bring people out in support of Palestine to get our demands. The more they try to silence us, the louder we will be. The more they try to silence us, the louder we will be. And so I went down to the rich man's house and I took back what he stole from me. Gather under my feet, under my feet, under my feet, they're under my feet, ain't gonna let no system walk all over me. I, this is just something that's up. I spent last night right here um, on this field on the second night of encampment at uh, the Columbia University main campus. And how did that happen that you spent your night here? 
Yeah, um, so the first night of the encampment, I actually was not like part of the organizing team. Um, I knew some folks that were part of the organizing team and were gonna brave it out for the first night. So I was just here temporarily, like bringing supplies to them, um, hanging out, like providing some moral support. Um, but then I went home to like the comfort of my own bed. Um, and then I came back early yesterday morning um, and stayed and, and watched my friend's arrests um, at about like one or two in the afternoon um, and watching, you know, the spontaneous occupation of the adjacent lawn was, I think, you know, I'm not the only one. I think like many people were inspired by that um, enough to, to stay the second night to keep the encampment um, continuous. How did you get involved uh, with activism in general and activism on the issue of the ongoing bombardment of Gaza? That's a good question. Um, I've done some like community organizing um, in the past, um, and I think you know since October that's really turned into Palestine solidarity organizing. Um, you know, like ever since October eighth, I think there's been a really clear um, fight against imperialism. Um, and a fundamental shift in people's understanding of um, what's really been a 75-year genocide um, in Palestine. Um, you know, that's done by the you know is Israeli military might and backing by the U.S. imperialists. And so, um, I think you know, like many others that are here today, um, it's really turned into you know we live in New York City, so there's like tons of rallies that are happening. Um, you know, at, at some point there were like many every day um, and so yeah we've we've just been trying to keep the momentum going because you know the genocide in Palestine is still going. Some of the organizers and many students were suspended and kicked out of their housing yesterday. Are you afraid? I'm not afraid. Um, I think everybody is weighing their risks um, on an individual basis. I know that for students some of the risks are um, suspension and loss of financial aid if that's something the students receive. Um, obviously neither of those things are really awesome um, but I think you know it's it's a historic moment right now. Um, I think not only just for like the Columbia encampments but just student organizing um, during this school year. It's, it's, we're making historic decisions um, and a lot is on the line you know like millions potentially billions of dollars um, that feed the Israeli occupation forces is on the line and so to risk suspension um, for my graduate degree um, to save you know potentially lives I mean there's no comparison so I'm not afraid I'm not nervous yeah. how long do you that how long do you intend to stay here um, you know what it's indefinite. To be honest, I'll give you like my kind of speculation. I feel like the first encampment was um, a bit more like, you know, it was more meticulously organized because it was through Columbia University Apartheid Divest, which is the coalition organization that formed um, in response to the revoking of the charters of the Columbia chapters of Jewish Voice for Peace and uh, Students for Justice in Palestine. So after that, like 30 to 40 organizations combined um, in support of um, of those two orgs in response to their repression, right? And so, you know, you had the first encampment that was super organized in that way. The second encampment is a spontaneous um, continuation of it after the arrests of all of those campers. So we're, I think we're all taking it like day by day, um, but we're all really resolute in the fact that we have to keep encampment going. Um, I don't think I need to like even necessarily like discuss that meticulously with like each and every person on the field right now to understand that like we all we all clearly understand um, the power that we have in this you know like occupation of land um, taking it into our control. I mean we pay tuition so it's ours but yeah, I don't know is the short answer to your question. Hmm. I think, would you like to add anything? Mm. Sure. I think um, it's, it's crazy that, you know, folks all over the country are talking about, like, this 
fields of like tarps, you know, um, not to be dramatic, but like it's crazy. And I think the reason for that is, or like I think what I, what I get from that is that there's like a fundamental shift on university campuses. I think we've unlocked the effectiveness um, and the strategy of like encampment. Um, we see how disturbing it is to university administration. We see how like embarrassed and devastated and afraid they are because of two two nights of encampment. Um, and I suspect, I hope um, that other universities, I hope that all universities um, across the country follow suit. Um, because yeah, I don't know. I think we we unlock something really powerful. I like that.